A very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our distinguished participants across the world. I would like to welcome you to the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization webinar series. My name is Ernest Echampo. I am a project manager at IMBA. I will be your moderator for this session together with my colleague, Michael Kwaku. Over the past month, we have had the opportunity to participate in discussions on key issues around bamboo and its role in environmental management. Um, these issues included uh, ecosystem services, climate change and carbon market opportunities, soil and water conservation, land restoration and conservation of endangered species. Now these themes fell under the theme one, which looked at bamboo and environmental management of the webinar series. Today, we begin a new series under theme two, which will di dissect issues around bamboo for poverty reduction and livelihood development. The sub theme for today's webinar is bamboo farming systems development. In this session, we will discuss several ways in which bamboo can be integrated into farming system to increase agriculture productivity, improve income and livelihood opportunities, as well as environment. We will also showcase three models from India, Vietnam and China. We are fortunate today to have three key distinguished experts who will share insights into how bamboo can be integrated into farming systems to improve incomes in smallholder communities. At this point, I would like to introduce our panelists who will make presentations. We have with us Dr. Jie Shinsong, who is the Director of Research Institute of Subtropical Forestry at the Chinese Academy of forestry. Then we have Dr. Dan Jing Tru, senior researcher at the Civil Culture Research Institute uh, at Vietnamese Academy of Forestry Sciences. Then we also have Dr. Rajesh Koshal, principal scientist at the ICA Indian Institute of Soil and Water Research. For our program today, we will start with the pr three presentations from our panelists, uh, which will be followed by questions that are selected from our Q&A sessions. For our particip participants, we uh, request you to submit your questions at the Q&A session at the top right corner of MS Teams. Um, we, as we may not be able to respond to all the questions received due to time constraint, we will, however, compile all the questions and share with our panelists who will respond to these questions at a later date. And now we begin with our first presentation from Dr. Xi Shensong from the Chinese Academy of Forestry. Thank you very much. Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Xie Jingzong, coming from Chinese Academy of Forestry. I'm very happy a chance to share my research results. Tonight, my topic is diversified bamboo smallholder income through agroforestry system, a case on bamboo mushroom farming system. My report including four parts. The first part is important of the agroforestry system for diversifying income for farmers' household, including three reason. The first because there are larger area bamboo stands in China can be used to develop under bamboo forest economy and the place an important role in private aviation in rural area. The second, there are rich resources of bamboo biomass residuum from management bamboo forestry and the processing factories can be used for 
cultivation of edible fungi. The third, you can show the table the chemical com composition structure of bamboo by mass is similar to that of wood, which is suitable for edible fungi growth. The second part is suitable edible fungi and bamboo forest selection. We selection six edible fun fungi and bamboo forest four species to suitable to plant in summer, for example, bamboo mushroom, and two species to suitable to plant in the autumn to spring, for example, Stephalia lugasunulada. The third one is the advantage of the developing edible fungi, fungi and bamboo forest. There are more than 10 advantages. For example, there are abundant species and bamboo stands can be used. The easy control of forest structure. Preferable light condition. Good micro climate in the forest with a larger amount of biomass residuals. Improve the land use efficiency and the economical benefits of the bamboo stands. Larger labor demand and suitable for the employment of the lead labor and the weak in the community. For example, warmer and the elderly of course, it opens the way of the biological utilization of bamboo cum. Now I will focus on the fourth part, successful model of near nature management for edible fungi and bamboo forest. This part I will take two cultivation model including bamboo mushroom and Sjofalia lugasuna lata and configuration both them in one year. Now, I first introduce bamboo mushroom cultivation model. Bamboo mushroom is one of the really edible fungi with good health care for the body. It is known in China as queen of the bacteria. Chinese people like it very much. Next, I will introduce the biological ecological characteristic of bamboo mushroom. Bamboo mushroom nutrition source come from the decom decomposed Dead bamboo roots come and the leaves. The growth temperature of the high fee is from two, from four to twenty-eight centigrade. degree. The formation temperature of the fruit body is from twenty-five to twenty-eight centigrade. degree. During the growth stage of high fee, sixty percent water content was required. The support for formation required air relative humid of above 85%. Light condition showed the canopy density of the forest is about 0.7. The soil cover is one of the issue conditions in bamboo mushroom cultivation. The pH value is 4.6 to 5.5. Next, I will introduce mushroom cultivation substrate 
preparation. The base material consumption, consumption is 3,000 kilo per mole of bamboo cuttings with ingredients for the auxiliary material as follow for fertilizer. Then before plant two months, stock fermentation should be done. When stocking, the first mix of the auxiliary material, then put them on the bamboo chips surface and mix by machine and give enough water. The pile heat should be more than two point meters. And the surface is covered with a black plastic film to keep moisture and warm. At the heap 15 days for the first turnover. After that, turn over it twice every 10 days. Then I introduce the mushrooms cultivation method. The first selection the First land. Bamboo stands is with convenient transportation, sufficient water source, flat turning, and the about 0 point canopy density should be selected. The second is digging church with 10 centimeters in depth, 30 centimeters in width. The third is choose the straw and the seed quantities. The straw is a longer skirt bamboo mushroom D89 with high yield, high temperature resistance and taste flag length. Straw sewing about amount is 2.5 bags per square meter. Fourth is sewing time from March to April in China. Fifth is planting method. The first is to watering a pile through. It is very important to reduce the ammonia gas. Then put the first layer of the substrate with 18 centimeters thickness. After that, put the straw. Then put a second layer of the substrate with 12 cm thickness. Then is covering soil 3 to 5 cm thickness and watering. Six plant management. After sowing, generally every 3 to 5 days, watering once to keep the surface soil moisture in normal weather. It takes two and a half months from sowing to produce mushroom. The seeds harvesting and dry. Harvesting season from June to mid-June to end of August. Harvesting time from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can show the video. You can show the because the bamboo mushroom grows very fast. The habit then the growth stop about uh, less two hours. How to bamboo mushroom harvest? First, you see if the skirt you can see the top 
the heat goes top, stop. Then you can buy the finger in the bottom, then the lift is okay. The Jai method. The mushrooms are collected and placed on the baking skin immediately after harvest. The baking room temperature is above 65 centigrade. After 30 minutes of the rapid dehydration, the mushrooms are then type up at last. The in a baking room of the 45 center degree, the duration need to be plugged, plugged, plugged to three hours. The final products are dried, white color and fragrant. This model produce mushroom quality is better than the marketing products for field cultivation. The container of protein, sugar, and ash are higher than the field cultivation products. This model benefits. Average yield, the 750 kilogram per hectare, and Output value is over 450,000 yuan. Plant cost is 195,000 yuan. Net income is more than 255,000 yuan. Next, I will introduce the second cultivation model. Straw failure, Luga Sunu Lata. This mushroom is one of the top 10 best selling mushroom in the international market. Next, I will introduce the mushrooms biological and ecological classity. Nutrition requirement, bamboo chips, straw, and sand dust can be used as a culture material. So, the, new, the moisture required and the light required is similar. The bamboo mushroom temperature required the optimal temperature for high fee growth is 32 to 24 centigrade. The optimum temperature for smaller for growth is 12 to 25 centigrade. pH value. The mushroom can grow at a pH value of 4.5 to 9. So, cover can promote the formation of the spore fur. The substrate adopt pure flesh, flesh bamboo chips or 9% flesh bamboo chips with 8% wheat blend with fermented <coughs> for two weeks. Cultivation season, sowing from the end of the August to the next June. The forest land and the selection by planting method and the management measure, similar to the bamboo mushroom planting, generally about 45 days after planting, the mushroom can be harvested. Harvesting mushroom can be produced from the mid October to the end of the next applier. While the most suitable seasons for mushroom 
is from late October to earlier December, and from March to April. Harvesting criteria, the food has not broken and just broke. When the lead bell shifted for harvest suitable period, the benefits of this model. Out of value, the average yield was 30,000 kilo per hectare, and the output value was 420,000 yuan. Plant cost is 133,000 and 500 yuan per hectare. Benefits in net income is 286,500 yuan per hectare. Last cultivation model is configuration both bamboo mushroom and Stephalia Luga Sula Lata in one year. This model can solve the problem of continual operation and uh, utilization of the land and the facilities in, is improved. The cost is reduced and the profit can reach more than 450,000 year per hectare. This is a model. The 20 point twin of bamboo cam branch and leaves per hectare of bamboo stands two years can be provided. The model of bamboo, mushroom and the plug stop for the Luga Sula Lata will consume 120 tons of substrate in one year. This is the model of the planting one hectare for two years required 11 hectares of bamboo stands to provide the substrate. The development of this model can solve the difficult problem of the bamboo series in China. This is my information. My topic is, is over. Thank you very much for everybody. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Xie. This is a very exciting um, presentation. Now we, um, I will provide a summary of the presentation, which is quite elaborate and it gives us very much details into how bamboo can contribute to mushroom production and its economic value. So in summary, we have seen that uh, there is an enormous advantages of bamboo stands and bamboo waste for the production of edible fungus. Then there's also, there are also successful models of edible fungus cultivation under bamboo stands. We have been shown the steps through which we can produce bamboo substrates uh, for the production of edible fungus. Now we have also been introduced to the huge economical benefits of uh, mushroom that are produced under um, bamboo stands and bamboo substrates. So we look at something like a production of over 750 kilograms per hectare at an estimated value of 64,000 US dollars per hectare, which is quite huge. It's a huge investment and is something that can contribute to improve livelihoods of uh, smallholders around the world. Thank you very much once again, Professor Zie. We now head, uh, go to our next presentation, which will be given by Dr. Dan Trinchu uh, on bamboo dendrocalamus uh, barbetos plantation in um, Than Hua province in Vietnam. Uh, over to you, Dr. Chu. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Tixio. 
I'm working in the Civicultural Research Institute under Vietnamese Academy of Forest Science. Uh, today, I would like to introduce the Dendro Columbus Bakbatut Plantation in Thanh Hoa Province. Firstly, I would like to introduce some information about bamboo in Vietnam. Vietnam has the 216 species belong to the 25 genera. The area of natural bamboo forest in Vietnam was 1,348,000 hectares, of which 239,000 hectares were the bamboo forest and 1,000,000. 144 hectares were the mist, the woods and bamboo forest. Plantation bamboo in Vietnam uh, were more than 200,000 hectares. And bamboo distributed in the eight ecological regions in Vietnam. And now I would like to review Dendro calamus babatu species in Vietnam. Uh, this species we call luong. Uh, luong grow in cluster with the shooting season from the April to August. Luong has a quite big size with the cum diameter width uh, 16 cm and the cum Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Tichio. I'm working in the Civic Culture Research Institute under Vietnamese Academy of Forest Science. Uh, today, I would like to introduce the Dendro Columbus Bakbatut Plantation in Thanh Hoa Province. Firstly, I would like to introduce some information about bamboo in Vietnam. Vietnam has the 216 species belong to the 25 genera. The area of natural bamboo forest in Vietnam was 1,348,000 hectares, of which 239,000 hectares were the bamboo forest and 1,144,000 hectares were the mist of woods and bamboo forest. Plantation bamboo in Vietnam uh, were more than 200,000 hectares, and bamboo distributed in the eight ecological regions in Vietnam. And now I would like to interview Dendro calamus babatu species in Vietnam. Uh, this species we call luong. Uh, luong grow in cluster with the shooting season from the April to August. Luong has a quite big size with the cum diameter width uh, 16 cm and the cum height can reach uh, 25 meter. Mostly Luong distribute in the northern Vietnam in five provinces in group Thanh Hoa, Hòa Bình, Phú Thọ. Sơn La and Điện Biên Province. Uh, Thanh Hóa occupy more than 80% of Luong area. Uh, the Luong only found in the plantation. Uh, no natural forest of Luong were found in Vietnam. Luong is considered as the multi-purpose species. Stem of Luong is a material for the construction, furniture, and handicrafts. Uh, the source of Luong is a delicious food in Vietnam. Stem of Luong uh, can be used like the pie for the house foundation and also can make the embankment for the waste breaking uh, in the coastal area. Luong also can be planned for the protect the Bank River and landscape and recreation. Area and seal of Luong before 1970. 
Luong Hua sketches plan in the garden and the bank river. During 1970, Vietnam established the forest enterprise and Luong Hua plan at the large scale from there. Currently, we have the more than 71,000 hectares. Mostly, the Luong distribute in four districts in Thanh Hoa. The zero Luong in Thanh Hoa were 42 million come per year. However, price for Luong uh, were quite low and range from the 0.4 to 0.45 US cent per kilogram of bread come. For planting methods, Luong has flower but no seeds. Uh, for produce uh, seedling, the farmer used the air layering and cutting methods. However, no the cultivar improvement uh, for this species. This means the seedlings sometimes have the uh, quite low quality. Uh, normally, the farmer planting only luong, like the monoculture. Eighty nine percent of luong were the monoculture. Only some household yield arrow forestry for the first uh, one to three year after planting, they plant the luong with the nuts, cassava, or maize. Thanh Hoa has the 47 facility for the luong processing. Um, mostly, the, they produce chopstick, paper mill, glass paper, uh, with the consumption around uh, 10 million come per year. Almost the facility has the, uh, quite a simple technology and a small invest capital. The capital uh, grew around uh, less than 300 US dollar. Luong Vua Khâu is planned for poverty reduction in Thanh Hoa. Some household had the 50% income from the Luong. Uh, now I would like to uh, talk about the challenge for Luong development in Thanh Hoa. Uh, after a long time cultivation, the Luong in Thanh Hoa as in the degradation uh, situation now. Uh, we are uh, easy to see the soil erosion in the many areas of the Luong plantation. The zeal of Luong also decreased by the time. If we uh, see the soil under Luong plantation, by the time we can compare. Some parameters like the pH, organic matter, total nitrogen, and porosity. All of this, this parameter were reduced significantly compared to previous year. Uh, some studies show that productivity of Luang reduced 50. 20 to 50 percent compared to 1990. Diameter of the cam of Luong in 1990 were from the 12 to 15. However, in the 2011, one study shows that almost the size of cam range from the uh, six to nine centimeter. Only 8.2 percent come at the large size, more than the uh, 9.5 centimeters. And also, one study shows that the diameter of the uh, lower come were reduced from the 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 centimeter per year during 2008 and 2011. Another problem with the Luong is that the pet and disease. More than 79% of Luong area were affected by the pet and disease. And uh, most various uh, pet and disease were the weaver. And 
purple lights. We were uh, like the egg in the top of the shoes. And uh, after maybe one week, the suit will be uh, decomposed. And if the luong affects by the purple lights, the luong shoes will uh, become the red color and uh, very small. And one can have uh, many um, uh, shoes, and the shoes cannot uh, grow uh, normally. Another challenge for long development would uh, long distribute in the mountainous area with the poor traffic system. So that's why the price for long were long. Almost the household have the small area uh, with the less than the one hectare. It means the, their income is not enough for their livelihood. Uh, net present value for Luong planting grew from the 300 to 400 US dollars per hectare per year. And uh, Luong processing had the poor technology. So now we uh, found that the Luong area is being degraded for other land use, like the Acacia and another species, in order to improve the loan quality. In 2014, Thanh Hoa approved the strategy plan for loan. The objectives of this strategy plan were to conduct intensive farming of the 29,000 hectares of Luong by 2020 to train techniques and transfer technology for 11,000 people by 2020 uh, to build the five bamboo factory and 100 enterprise for providing raw material by 2020 and uh, by 2030 10 bamboo factory and 180 to 200 enterprise will be established to increase the job for the 4,000 workers with income from the 250 to 300 US dollar per month to enhance price of the come by the 1 to 1.5 times compared to price in the 2040 to consolidate and develop 50 to 55 enterprise, uh, increase to the 6,000 labor by the 2030, and increase double the income for the worker in the field of the handicraft production. Uh, one year after uh, improvement, the strategy plan. In uh, 2015, Thanh Hoa started uh, implementing uh, the strategy plan. Uh, after three, after four years, the two objectives of the strategy plan uh, were implemented. And some uh, successful, like the uh, organize the training on long sustainable management for 11,000 farmers and 430 extension staff. Thanh uh, Hoa support the Luong plantation owner during the 2016 and 2019. Uh, this uh, household received the uh, 86 US dollar for the one hectare of Luong uh, for fertilizer. The total area of Luong uh, will uh, provide fertilizer for 12,980 hectares. And Thanh Hoa also established the forest roads with the 60 kilometers in the remove area. 
the total budget for the implementing of the strategy were uh, 2.5 million US dollars. And uh, besides, uh, Thanh Hoa also applied the uh, payment for forest ecosystem service. Uh, this program start in the uh, 2019 with um, 1,688 households. However, the rate for the payment was very low, from 0.1 to 4.5 US dollars per hectare per year. Uh, total payment for the uh, PFAS was 938,000 US dollars. From the information about, I have the two conclusions. The first will play very important role in economic, environment, social, and culture in Tainhua. However, Tainhua also had very big selection for Luang development. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please let me know if you have any uh, uh, question or the, any comment. Thank you. contribution to agroforestry de development. Uh, we are very grateful. Let me give a summary of uh, what uh, Dr. Dan shared with us. Um, we, from his presentation, we have the opportunity to understand the role of bamboo in social, economic, and environmental management in, in, in the Taoha province. Now he has shared with us some of the factories that exist already and how bamboo is also integrated into the local society. Um, but obviously there are quite a number of challenges um, um, in terms of land degradation and the low value of uh, bamboo and also the lack of processing technologies which would enhance the value of bamboo. Now the good news is that um, the province has a strategy in place which is also contributing to the improvement of the bamboo uh, sector. Already they have uh, supported farmers to um, improve uh, uh, bamboo plantations. They have also contributed to training activities and they are also looking forward to uh, providing uh, technology transfers to farmers in order to increase um, bamboo plantation and also bamboo processing. Now already we know how bamboo has become critical in these societies and its ability to alleviate poverty in this um, uh, province of uh, Vietnam. Dr. Dan, we want to thank you once again uh, for the presentation. Our next um, presentation is coming from Dr. Rajesh Kochal, um, who is going to share with us um, experiences of agroforestry research from India. Um, the floor is yours, uh, Dr. Rajesh. Thank you. A very good evening to all of you. Today I am going to speak on the topic Bamboo Based Agroforestry in India. The contents of my presentation in Global Challenges Context, Agroforestry and its role in meeting the global challenges, importance of Bamboo Based Agroforestry, then uh, the research conducted in India on Bamboo Based Agroforestry, below the direct and indirect benefits and it will be followed by conclusion.
呃，清辉现在停了，你看能？你看是不是要重重新分享一下？Yeah, it seems uh, we having a little bit of technical issues over there, so we will start again. A very good evening to all of you. Today I am going to speak on the topic. It's okay now. Contents of my presentation in global challenges in the today's context. Agroforestry and its Tinghui,那个你的麦克是不是关了？Tinghui,把麦克打开。Today I am going to speak on the topic Bamboo Based Agroforestry in India. The contents of my presentation in global challenges in the today's context, agroforestry and its role in meeting the global challenges, importance of bamboo based agroforestry, then uh, research conducted in India on bamboo based agroforestry, including the direct and indirect benefits, and it will be followed by conclusion. Poverty, hunger, land degradation, and climate change, they are the major global challenges. To talk of poverty, about 76 million people, they are living on less than $1.90 per day. And this year, 71 million people, they have been pushed to extreme poverty due to COVID pandemic. Talk of hunger, poor nutrition, and health. 26% of the population is affected by moderate or severe food insecurity. And this year again, the situation has further worsened due to COVID pandemic. And land irradiation is one of the serious problem, problem globally. About 2 billion hectare area is under uh, different kind of degradation, which is affecting directly or indirectly 3.2 billion people. And out of this, 56% of the land degradation is accounted to water erosion, and 28% of the land degradation is accounted to wind erosion. And talking about the climate change, 2019 was the second warmest year on the record. And further, the global temperature, they are projected to increase by 3.2 degrees centigrade by the year 2010. Agroforestry has the potential to address all these challenges. Agroforestry includes combination of trees, annual crops, and animals on same piece of land in some form of spatial arrangement or temporal sequence. Animal crops, trees, and animals are important components of any agroforestry system. Agroforestry is an old practice, but a new science. If you see the benefits of agriculture or forestry in isolation, they are limited. However, the benefits of agroforestry, they are infinite. Agroforestry provides both direct and indirect benefits and helps in achieving the sustainable development goals. Nair and co-workers, they estimated the agroforestry area coverage to the tune of 823 million hectares. In India, agroforestry practice have been included in the various development programs like watershed development program, desert development program, uh, then flood area development program, drought area development program, etc. And India is also the first country to adopt national agroforestry policy which emphasized on enhancing the productivity, ecological, and livelihood security. And agroforestry practice, they include the alley cropping, agri-silvopasture, silvopasture, agro-silvopasture, wind breaks, etc. Bamboo is fastest growing plant distributed in many parts of the world. It grows in 37 million hectare area worldwide. 
With multiple use, it has proven potential for contributing to sustainable production, providing ecological and livelihood security, and achieving sustainable development goals like eradication of poverty, clean energy, sustainable production, climate change, land degradation, etc. India is the second richest country of the world after China in terms of energetic resources. And it hosts about 136 number of species belonging to 29 genera, and out of this 96 species are native and 40 species are cultivated. And the bamboo area of the country is 15.69 million hectares. And the major dominating species is Dendrogalmus pictus, which covers about 45% of the area. This is followed by Melograna brassifera, which covers about 20% of the area. And this is followed by bamboo sub bamboos, Dendrogalmus hamiltoni, bamboo sapulda, and bamboo sapalida. Bamboo in India grows normally in all the states with the exception of Kashmir region in Jammu and Kashmir. However, the productivity of Indian bamboo is the low as compared to China and Taiwan. However, it can be improved by undertaking scientific cultivation and management of the bamboo. And recognizing this, Government of India has allocated uh, rupees 12.9 billion for promoting bamboo sector, and this proposed to bring about one lakh hectare area under bamboo plantation. In this context, bamboo-based agroforestry it can be a major important. Why bamboo-based agroforestry? As we know that bamboo is the fastest growing plant on the earth, which can provide returns on sustainable basis after initial establishment period of four to five years. Like agroforestry tree species, bamboo need not to be replanted after harvesting till it flower, which usually takes place after a long interval of 30 to 50 years. Therefore, harvesting of bamboo they do not need, uh, lead to the deforestation. Then bamboo is widely distributed uh, right from the tropical temperate region. Many of these bamboo species have wide adaptability to different temperature and soils due to which they can very well fit into the agroforestry. On agriculture land, bamboo can be benefited from fertilizers, irrigations, and other agriculture operations done for the annual crops. As a result, quality and quantity of both bamboo are enhanced. Government of India has also exempted bamboo grown on non-forest areas from definition of trees, thereby making it easier for the farmer to cultivate bamboo and achieve the target of doubling farmer income by 2022. Bamboos have multiple uses and these adoption on agriculture land can enhance the farmer's income and can provide them the activities. And bamboo provides numerous indirect benefits like soil water conservation, urban sequestration, improvement in soil health, biodiversity, and can be potential crops for farmers in providing the numerous ecosystem services. Then due to the peculiar phenological factors like canopy, high little fall, high fine root biomass, bamboo have ability to take soil erosion, bank stabilization, and rehabilitation of degraded lands. Bamboo under agroforestry systems can be grown and replanted from the plantation, windbreak, shelter, and commercial crop planting. Homesteads, they are small scale plantations grown in scattered manner along with agriculture crop and trees in multi tier systems. Shade loving crops like ginger, turmeric, vanilla, large cardamoms, they are usually grown as interest. These systems are highly productive owing to the large inputs provided by the farmers. Then the species mainly used for the homesteads are Bambusa balcoa, Bambusa newtons, Polymorpha, Pestacus oliverae, Bambusa puta, and Dendocalumus hamilton. Then coming to windbreaks, now bamboo as windbreaks are usually grown to protect orchards from high speed wind. Sometimes bamboos are also planted on buns to minimize the competition with the agriculture. For protection from wind, usually one to two, three lines are planted. And the species mainly uh, used are Dendrogalmus strictus, Bambus of Balco, Bambus of Newton, and Bambus of Bambus. They are mainly the preferred species for windbreaks. Then coming to the block plantation, which are uh, generally grown for commercial purpose. As we know that bamboo requires four to five years for first harvest if planted from the offset, and about six to seven years if planted from seeds. This period can be effectively utilized for growing annual crops, which can provide returns to the farmers when bamboo is not available for the harvest. In block plantation, bamboo can be raised as commercial crop, and bamboos are mainly planted in square or rectangular spacing, starting from 3 into 3 meters to 12 into 12 meters, 
spacing however depends on the objective of the plantation then coming to high density plantation uh, nowadays these are being raised for bio production or bio cng production and in this system intercropping is not much viable as the plants are grown at a very close spacing of 2 into 2 meter Uh, this system of plantation require very high input for their optimum growth several species have been evaluated under ecofrsp at various research institutes in the country at different stages different intercrops have been screened for their growth and yield profile two researchers have also attempted to evaluate indirect benefits of growing bamboos All this research have led to better understanding of bamboo crop interaction on agricultural land. Research conducted on bamboo-based agroforestry so far has shown that two phases can be categorized in terms of bamboo. First is establishment phase, and second is post-establishment phase. Establishment phase, which consists of first uh, one to three years, and during this phase, actually more care is required for the bamboo plants. And if we are doing the intercropping, we should take care that intercrop should not be grown very near to the bamboo clump. If possible, a strip of one meter can be retained for this purpose. And during this phase, fertilizer and irrigation applications they have been found to enhance the survival and growth of the bamboo clumps. During the post-establishment phase, that is, it consists of more than three years bamboo clumps. Now the shade uh, it has started developing. so thinning and pruning is very very important to avoid the light competition further as the canopy is uh, closed now so if possible shade tolerant crops should be grown if the bamboo plants are at a very close spacing and it has been seen if uh, more focus is towards the agriculture crop then trenching can be used for avoiding the root competition with the agriculture crop and the bamboo in addition to thinning Pruning and trenching are yet to be obtained with the adequate management practices. NPK fertilizer should be given as per the soil test, and it should be increased with increase in age of the plant. During the later stages, vermicompost produced from the leaf litter can also enhance the productivity of the plant. It has also been observed that drip irrigation, as compared to flood irrigation, helps in enhancing the water efficiency and saving the water. then intercrop which is one of the important during the uh, in the bamboo based agroforestry system so the yield of the intercrop it varies from species to species and also with the planting material for example if we are taking uh, plants from the offsets or cutting then the initial growth is high as compared to the seedling plant or agriculture plant and therefore the competition starts very early Eight bamboo species evaluated under agri silviculture system revealed highest growth in Dendrocalamus hamiltonii and bamboo sub bulbua during the second year. The growth of these species also affected the growth and yield of cowpea, which was maximum in control plot, followed by Dendrocalamus asper and bamboo sub tulda. The lowest yield of cowpea was recorded under Dendrocalamus hamiltonii. These are some of the pictures from intercropping experiment. You can see the cow pea, which is intercropped with Dendrocalamus tictus, Bamboo sub bulbua, Bamboo sub bamboos, and Dendrocalamus asper. You can also see the growth difference in different bamboo species. This is intercropping of soybean with Dendrocalamus asper. The gro growth of Dendrocalamus asper is two year old. In this experiment, intercrops were taken up to fifth year after which there was drastic reduction in the intercrops due to canopy closure. However, it was observed that intercrops have positive effect on growth and biomass of them. After 14th year, uh, 14 years of study, maximum diameter has been recorded in Dendrocalamus humdevii, followed by Bamboosa newtons and Bamboosa bulb. Height growth also followed the similar trend. Number of columns were highest in Bamboosa newtons, followed by Bamboosa bulb. Column weight was highest in Dendrocalamus humdevii, where it reached about 36 kg. Followed by bamboo sub vulgaris and bamboo sub bulb. These are the pictures of bamboo sub bulb who are intercropped with maize, intercropped with chicken pea, mustard, uh, with apiculture, and with black gum. Intercropping of soybean, cowpea, and potato with bamboo sub bulb who are 
एज ऑफ द प्लांट आर टू ईयर फॉर टेकिंग इंटर क्रॉप फॉर लॉन्गर ड्यूरेशन वाइड स्पेसिंग इज यूज प्रेफर्ड एट टेन इंटू टेन मीटर ट्वेल्व इंटू ट्वेल्व मीटर और ट्वेल्व इंटू टेन मीटर स्पेसिंग इट हैज बिन रिपोर्टेड दैट इंटर क्रॉप कैन बी टेकन फॉर लॉन्गर ड्यूरेशन विदाउट मच अबाउट ग्राउंड कॉम्पिटिशन Wide spacing facilitates more photosynthetic active radiation, as you can see from this experiment, where LAI was significantly reduced and PAR was increased at wider spacing. Further, you can see that yield is also increased with increase in spacing. Study conducted at wider spacing of 10 into 10 meter and 12 into 10 meter in central India revealed that chickpea and sesame can be successfully grown as intercrops up to 7 year under 10 to 12 months strict term there was a reduction of 12 to 14% in the yield of intercrop in 7th year land equivalent ratio was also higher under agroforestry as compared to soil crop analysis further revealed the better growth of land to kelm strict comes with intercrops as compared to soil crops you can see from the picture that at wider spacing intercrops can be taken for longer duration of time this is the musa newton and bamboo balkwa intercrop with faba bean in optic closure which depends on species regulates the yield of intercrop at close spacing canopic closure is observed from fourth year onward while in wider spacing canopic closure is observed from sixth to eighth year depending upon the species Once canopy start closing, it is always recommended to go for it to cropping of shade loving crops like turmeric, ginger, yam, alocasia. In middle Himalayan region, seven intercrops were screened for growth and yield performance under Dendrocalamus hamiltoni and Phyllostachys pubescens. Yield of all crops except ginger and turmeric declined under both the bamboo species. comparatively higher net returns were obtained under bamboo turmeric and bamboo ginger cropping combination as compared to roll and other crop combination bamboo based silvi pasture systems have been found suitable for degraded non arable lands in ravine region silvi pasture system are capable of producing 10 ton per hectare per year of grass yield under bamboo species during the initial years the system also provided 1000 bamboo poles during the 7th year the bc ratio of the system has been worked out to 2 thereby indicating its profitability the silvi pasture system are capable of absorbing more than 80% rainfall and bringing soil erosion to less than 1 ton per hectare per year bamboo plus gini grass and bamboo plus lemon grass have also been developed and found remunerative combination during the initial growth stages of the bamboo from the research studies conducted in india it can be concluded that in bamboo canopic closures occur at faster rate and even spacing of 5 into 5 meter is not enough to accommodate regular intercrop for more than 3 years number of intercrops given in tables are recommended for first 3 years however during third to sixth year partially shade loving crops like yam colocasia turmeric ginger should be grown farmer objective is to go with the topping for longer duration the spacing of more than 10 into 10 meter is appropriate as this spacing permits more photosynthetic active radiation to the understory crop and better yield bamboo does not only provide direct benefits but are also capable of yielding some of the direct benefits like saving soil erosion enhancing groundwater recharge improving soil health enhancing carbon sequestration these indirect benefits however have not given much attention so far research conducted by our team revealed that bamboo are capable of increasing aggregate stability which directly prevents physical degradation of organic matter and binding the soil particles which help in preventing soil erosion comparison of different species with the control plot revealed that soils under dendrocalamus hamiltoni has highest aggregate stability followed by bamboo sabalco the lowest stability was recorded in dendrocalamus as per and bamboo san newton speed bamboo roots contribute to development of necropores by pushing through the soil while they grow or by leaving channels when they die thereby improving hydraulic conductivity under different bamboo species hydraulic conductivity increases significantly as compared to control crop 
in dendrocalamus hamiltonii and bambusa newtons, catalytic conductivity was enhanced by 2.7 times, thereby indicating the role of this species in enhancing a proper recharge, water holding capacity, and improving soil moisture to keep. Above and below ground biomass accumulation by bamboos can contribute significantly to urban sequestration. Results of the study under different species will that bamboos are capable of sequestering 5 to 14.5 ton per hectare per year of carbon in above ground biomass. Now coming to the conclusions part. Analysis have revealed that growing of the crops under bamboo is technically feasible and economically viable during the initial years of establishment. The period of intercropping, however, can be further extended by adopting wider spacing. Management practices like irrigation, fertilizer application, pruning, column thinning, and planting can reduce the competition and provide better yield of column that we Species like Bambusa balkwa, Bambusa tulda, and Dendrogalus from the Y, due to high productivity and good market, can be better choice for intercropping with agriculture crops in the areas with adequate rainfall or assured irrigation facilities. In dry areas, species like Dendrogalmus strictus and Bambusa bambos can be safe choice for agroforestry. These species are also appropriate for rehabilitation of degraded lands. Bamboo based silly pasture system can also be cost effective solution for non arable lands. Before planting of bamboo, its quality and age of mother plants need to be ensured. Recently, we have seen in Bamboo Sub Balkua where farmers have gone for its wide scale adoption on that scale, mainly due to availability of quality planting material. This needs to be promoted for further species as well. The efficient root system and what defoliation dense canopy in bamboo provides several intangible benefits to the farmers. These intangible benefits need to be converted into monetary terms with appropriate policies from the government so that farmer going for the bamboo cultivation are benefited. Farmers in India have started growing bamboos on the farmland. However, issues like market need to be addressed for retaining the interest of farmers in the bamboo sector. So towards the end, I would like to thank in for providing the opportunity to speak in this webinar. I'm also highly thankful to Liu, Michael and Ernest for the technical support. And last but not the least, I'm highly thankful to all the participants for sparing their valuable time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rajesh. Um, this is well appreciated. Um, we, we are very grateful for this insightful presentation you have given us. Um, in summary, we, we, we have more evidence day in and day out, and uh, Rajesh, uh, presentation has confirmed it about the um, inter, uh, the intercropping with bamboo uh, has um, uh, technically and economically feasible. Uh, we have both tangible and intangible benefits associated with bamboo intercropping. Well, he also introduced to us different uh, combination of bamboo uh, and the different species and uh, uh, with crops which are favorable for different weather conditions. He also shared with us different roles of bamboo in uh, uh, agroforestry, especially homestead, uh, farm break, uh, farm boundaries, wind breaks, uh, block plantation, and also high density plantation that are being, uh, are being used for bioethanol. Uh, we are very grateful once again to Rajesh for this insightful presentation. Uh, these presentations will be made available to our participants because I'm sure there are a lot of details participants are also yearning to have. And so we will do that. So on that note, uh, we would like to ask uh, uh, some questions to our panelists and I'll hand over to Michael. Michael has uh, sampled some of the key questions that have been asked by our participants and he will ask them to the panelists. So over to you, Michael. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ernest. I think uh, we've had an uh, exciting and interesting uh, presentation from our uh, panelists. And not surprisingly, it has attracted quite a number of questions as well. Um, most of the question goes to uh, Dr. Shui 
and Troy. Uh, so the first question that comes is to Dr. Shue. Uh, it says, how much can farmers get from mushroom per unit? And any shift cultivation needed for reproduction of the mushroom? Dr. Shue, can you hear me, please? Yeah. So normally yeah. we, we can got the income, net income from Chinese Mu. Mu meaning is uh, 670, uh, 67 square meters. We come in, in net income about uh, more than 15,000 year, Chinese year. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And the next question goes again to you, Dr. Shui. And uh, they want to find out, how they want to find out, how do we get bamboo industry big, or the mushroom big? The mushroom beach? Yeah, making it bigger. I mean, yeah, it's bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He asked, he asked, that, uh, that is, uh, how can we expand the production of bamboo? Uh, one the way expand the uh, planting the earlier. Now is we with we'll see in the marketing is first. Otherwise, the government the the, the, the farmer cannot earn the money because cannot sell the mushroom. Mm. First, we will the marketing is very important. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think this is very good for those who want to make it in a big commercial uh, 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 industry. Uh, the second, the third question to you again, Dr. Shui, is that uh, do you have experience of bamboo mushroom farming practice in Africa or the tropical countries? I think uh, it's a Dependent on the Africa's uh, climate, I can, I think so, can plant uh, the mushroom, no problem, I think, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, but I wanted to find out whether you have any experience or somebody has reported mushroom production from bamboo in Africa. Okay. Do you think the genetic deterrence of lungs be one reason for degradation of plantations? Uh, I don't think because the, we use the cutting for the produce the seedling. So uh, the degradation of the lung is not called of the genetics, but maybe called of the um, uh, uh, wrong technique during the cultivation or something like this. But in Thanh Hoa, we uh, found uh, some the different uh, variety if we choose the good variety for planting, maybe we can uh, get the more the production. Oh, okay, good. Um, the second question to you again is that uh, how do you treat and control the pest and disease of long bamboo? Uh, for the pest and disease for long bamboo, it's not easy to control because for the mm. pest, uh, uh, very difficult, even cannot use the chemical uh, to, to treat this one. So for the farmer, uh, during the matting season, uh, in the um, sun uh, around the, from the 5 to 6 p.m., the people go to the Luang plantation to find the major larva to kill them. Or uh, after the uh, larva major lay the egg on the soil, they turn on the soil and uh, to uh, uh, to 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 destroy the, their egg, and for the another uh, disease like the purple lice. So now we don't have uh, we have the, some study, but actually we could not find any the 
uh, real the reason for the, this kind of disease. Some people said that it is uh, one kind of the fung uh, fungi, and some people said uh, it's a cause of the virus. So the, for the, this one, the people only the after they found uh, this kind of disease, they will uh, destroy the uh, uh, this uh, uh, clump, and maybe they burn. So we don't have any the uh, effective the method to control the pets and disease for the luong now. Oh, thank you. Um, another question to you. So many questions to you. Okay. Um, <laughs> somebody want to find out that uh, in the Leong strategic plan 2015-2030, yeah. what, what were the respective contribution of the national of the national at the local national and local government vis-a-vis -vis the private sector academic research institution and the local organization to the strategic plan mm -hmm. okay as uh, in my presentation the long uh, mostly distribute in um, thanh hoa and some another province but for the um, national government also provide uh, some budgets for the research to find the uh, uh, the best way for the solution with the issue. Uh, for example, we have the, some the projects and uh, also uh, for the research and also some budget for the uh, extension training about the technique for uh, this, uh, this one. And um, yeah, something like this, the government, local government and also the national government also provide some the budget for study, for the training uh, and also the uh, they uh, encourage the uh, local people by the, uh, some the, um, uh, different way. Okay, all right. I think uh, one question for Dr. Rajesh. Um, yes. Somebody want to find out uh, who should we contact for agroforestry in South State Tamil Nadu? Okay. Uh, in South State of Tamil Nadu, we are having agriculture university, state agriculture university. So, uh, in Tamil Nadu, a forest college is there in Metupalayam. So, they can contact Dr. Parthiban uh, in Metupalayam and then uh, Dr. Bharti is there in Gromore Biotech. So, that is also in Hosur, I think. So, they can also contact Dr. Bharti or then uh, Dr. Parthiban in state agriculture university, Metupalayam. Then in Andhra Pradesh also there is a agriculture university they can contact. Then at Kerala there is a KFRI where Shyam Vishwanath is there. So these people can be contacted for bamboo. Oh, okay. Uh, what about uh, Andhra uh, uh, Pradesh? Andhra Pradesh State Agriculture University is there. So they can contact the State Agriculture University, the forestry department there. They are working on bamboo in Andhra Pradesh. Oh. Okay. And then the last question for Dr. Tra again. Uh, this is not a question, but it's a, it's a comment from Dr. Fu Jehind from International Bamboo and Rattan Organization. And he was also commenting that uh, Barbados is a very good species and he saw it in Vietnam, in, in, in Tuan Hau. So if you can comment more about it, but he said that that's what he, that was his experience. Uh, Dr. Troy? Dr. Trin. Dr. Dan, yes. Yes. So, again, sorry. Yes, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a question. It was a contribution or a comment from Dr. Fu Jenhen from International Bamboo and Rattan Organization. And he says that uh, Barbados is a very good species. Yeah. Uh, and that he saw it in Vietnam himself. Yeah. Yes, so I don't know whether you want to throw more light on that. Mm -hmm. Again, again, the question again. Sorry, it's not... not okay. You wanted to say that uh, Barbados is a very good species for lions, so okay. in, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So he wants you to tell us a bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, here we have... Uh, uh, here we have... Uh, Okay. It was just a comment, so maybe oh, not necessarily to... Understand. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Now, Michael, we have an explanation about truffles. Yeah. And uh, truffle okay. is a black mushroom and uh, also known as black gold. 
Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, just so, so um, if um, Dr. Stray can also comment on that one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you mean Dr. Xie? Yeah, do, no, no, not Dr. Xie. I think the question was yeah. to start yes. on the, yes. Okay, so maybe any of them can, can, can also explain. I want to throw more light or comment on that one. That can we use the same platform to grow uh, truffles, I mean black uh, mushrooms? So this Dr. goes to Dr. Shea. Yes. Yes. Dr. Shea. Yeah, yeah. What do you think So not, not, we have not researched this, uh, this uh, mushroom. Okay. Okay. I think, uh, okay. Maybe I can ask last question. There's one last question for Dr. Rajesh. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, a question I want to find out: What is the best harvesting scheme of bamboo under agroforestry development system? Mm -hmm. Okay, whenever we are dealing with bamboo harvesting particularly, there is a technique horseshoe harvesting that can be adopted. However, it is always recommended that mm -hmm. after fifth year, if, if it is feasible, then every year harvesting has to be done. All the uh, third and fourth year old cones, they are to be harvested and first and second year they have to be retained. And if we are following this kind of pattern, then we can uh, minimize the competition with the crop in case of agroforestry. So always it is recommended to go for every year harvesting has to be done after fifth year. That is the only pattern to be followed in agroforestry to reduce competition. Okay, and let's see if there's time. I can ask one last question again for the Rajas. People are now asking more questions. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. We are <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, the, the, the last question is that uh, the, the practice of agroforestry has a multiple benefits, especially for smallholder farmers as research has shown. How can governments enhance uptake of bamboo integration in their crop field, given land scarcity and competing alternatives of material such as tree, providing almost same uses uh, to a farmer. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, as compared to tree, we will say that bamboo, it can be harvested every year without disturbing the root system. So that is, it will not lead to deforestation. That is one of the plus with bamboo as compared to the tree. Now, the second part is whenever we are dealing with the, uh, when, whenever we are dealing with this uh, small land holdings, so particularly when we are dealing with the small land holdings, the main problem with the farmer is number one is market and number second is the produce, which is not up to that level because he is having few cones only. So if you'll go into no uh, big contractor is coming to his farm to purchase the bamboo. So in that case, if the farmers mm. they are having land holding, we have to go for the cluster approach where all the village at uh, the village level, the bamboo has to be cultivated at the village level, not at the individual family level. So if uh, a village, uh, a cluster approach can be followed at a village level or a mass scale, then only the market can be developed and then farmer will have the advantage and that land holding problem can also be solved. Mm. I I have... Thank you. That's the last question for Dr. Shui. And that's, should I go ahead? <laughs> okay, so, so Dr. Shui, uh, one last question for you. Uh, how can bamboo mushroom nutritional benefits be researched further? And some of the tra traditional uses of bamboo mushroom include treating inflammation, 
uh, neurosurgeon and the stomach diseases. South China, Mao community using it for pain injury, coughing and weaknesses, leukemia and clitus. It is used for, for it is for, used for fever, sore throat, diarrhea, cough, hypertension, hepatitis.谢老师我来解释一下啊然后在苗族的那个用途里面它还有治力气血啊体力的这些作用它还可以退烧然后呢去可以那个防止这个嗓子肿起来呀或者这些他说您认为就是我们现在就是用现在的手段在研究它的这个有效成分它还有没有什么进一步的这个其他的这个营养成分了 uh, In China, no, no more information for to research for use not just for the food first but the Bamboo mushroom so is for good for for protect the, the high blood and the high the sugar and the and also protect the the liver cancer is is very good and the, another thing I, I have not know something yeah. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much. I think uh, you can keep on, I mean, participants can keep on sending the questions. We will get back to you. Just add your email address and then we will get back to you with the answers. So I will now hand over back to Ernest to give a conclusion remarks. Thank you very much all for coming up with your questions. Really appreciated it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. Um, we, we really appreciate uh, these questions. To our participants, we are very grateful for the questions you've asked. Um, overall, we, I believe we've had a very insightful session. We've had the opportunity to understand the role of bamboo in agroforestry uh, and also farming systems, its contribution in terms of mushroom production and the estimated value of mushroom production under bamboo is quite enormous. And so that is why I believe a lot of questions are coming. We've also had the opportunity to understand the role of um, bamboo in land degradation, um, ecological restoration from uh, Vietnam, and also um, the products of bamboo and also um, vegetables from uh, um, India. Uh, on behalf of the International Water um, um, Bamboo and Rattan Organization, I would like to uh, thank all of you, especially our panelists who have been gracious enough to give us such insightful presentations. Um, we also thank our participants who, who have also asked questions and some of the questions that are coming. We hope that you've enjoyed yourself. Um, good day, uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, good evening, see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 B